the before and after pseudo elements in CSS are powerful pseudo elements that allows you to do a lot of interesting things with CSS. In this video, I'll be simplifying these pseudo elements to help you understand what these pseudo elements are and how they can be useful, cases where you shouldn't use these pseudo elements, and also to help you understand cases where you cannot use these pseudo elements. And let's say we have a H1 with this simplified. And let's say we want to add a text before simplified that says hello, but we want to put this hello in another element. Let's say we want to put it in a span. Maybe after simplified, you want to put another span element that says hi. Now, if you come here, you have hello from the first span, you have simplified, then you have hi. Now, what you notice here is that because we wanted to introduce this hello and this hi and wanted to put it in the different element, we now had to introduce two HTML elements to the DOM, which in this case is this span and this span. Well, what the before and after pseudo element allows you to do is that you can introduce content to your web page but from the CSS without having to introduce any elements to your HTML or to the DOM. What do I mean by this? I can say H1 before pseudo element and then here I can have a content. This property is very important. If you don't put this property, you will not have your before pseudo element. Hello. And I can also have H1 after and in this content, I can have hello. If I comment these two spans and I refresh, oh no, this should be hi. You can now see we have hello coming from this before pseudo element. We have hi coming from this after pseudo element. And now the only thing we have in the DOM is this H1 and this simplified text. We didn't have to introduce any new HTML element. And if we inspect the DOM, here we have H1. I can see here we have the simplified text and we have this before pseudo element coming from the CSS side. We have this after pseudo element coming from the CSS side. And you notice that we don't even have the hello here. All we have is just this indication that says there's a before pseudo element here and there's an after pseudo element here. And let me even delete these two items so it's not confusing. You can see in the DOM, you only have the simplified, then you have before and you have after. So what you notice here is that we are able to add hello and hi from the CSS side. Now, if you notice with CSS, for the most part, you can only style things that are already in the DOM. You can only style a paragraph, an image, content that is already in the DOM. But what the before and after pseudo element allows you to do is that you can add things to your web page, but from CSS. And when you add things like this, the same styles you can apply to other elements in HTML, you can also apply it here. So for example, here we can say color red, font size 20 pixels. For the after, we can say color purple, font size 10 pixels, text decoration on the line. You see the hello is the before, the simplified is what is in the DOM and the high is the after. And the reason why everything is on one line is because by default, the before and after pseudo elements have a display of inline. But if I change this display to block, you can see the before now has a display of block. You can also come to the after and put a display block. And now you have this. But I also recommend that if you're using the before and after pseudo elements, don't use it to add text like this. And I'm going to explain why in a second. Now, how you'd see people use the before and after pseudo elements is maybe drawing shapes or doing some fancy styles. Now, let's say I wanted to draw a rectangle. If I didn't want to use this before and after pseudo element, I'll probably come into this H1 and maybe have a span rectangle dot rectangle display block width 40 pixels height 10 pixels background color red. You can see this rectangle. But then we had to introduce this span element just for this rectangle or you may even use a div. Now this is where the before and after pseudo elements can be useful. When you need to do things like this, instead of adding extra markup to your elements or to the DOM, you can simply do this using your before and after pseudo element. I can come here to before. I need to put a content. If I don't put the content, nothing will show, but I can have the content empty like this and I can copy all of this from the rectangle, put it in this before and let's just say I delete this other one here. I can now remove this span with the class of rectangle and if I refresh, you can see now we have this. We didn't need to introduce any span or div just because we wanted to draw a rectangle. When you need to do some things, add some elements, shapes, background images, whatever, instead of having to introduce elements to your DOM, you can just do it directly from here. Let me go back to what everything was. One more thing I want to show you with the before and after pseudo element is that the before and after pseudo element comes before and after the content of an element. Here, the content 
content of this h1 is a span with a class of rectangle and this text simplified by adding before and after it doesn't mean that the before is going to come before the h1 and the after is going to come after the h1 no the before comes before the content of the h1 and the after comes after the content of the h1 all of this here is the content earlier on i recommended that you shouldn't use the before and after pseudo elements for text content like this and i'm going to explain why if i double click on this simplified text you can see that it highlights the text but if i double click on this before pseudo element it's not highlighting it if i double click on this after pseudo element it's not highlighting it that is because as we saw this is not in the dom hello and hi are not in the dom it we only have these indications here and what this means is that it can affect accessibility it can affect seo because hello and hi is not registered on this page it is only added from the css side and i can show you what i mean by this not being very accessible let's say i had a text like bonjour and this is french now if i right click and i say translate this page to english you can see that it translated bonjour to english but let's say i change this content here to palais i think palais is speak in french and what else do i know in french well francais now if i refresh and i translate this to english you can see that only the bonjour is translated to hello and that is because this is the only text that is registered in the dom palais and francais are coming from the css side and that is why in an area of translation you can see that the browser doesn't take into account all of this if we go back here to the dom you can see that palais is not here francais is not here so it's almost like the dom doesn't even know what is there it only has an indication that says hey the css is going to add something to the before here the css is going to add something to the after so that is why i said that you shouldn't use this for text another thing i want to show you is remember i said the content property is very important right if i remove this content property and i refresh we don't have any before here if we check the dom you see we also don't have any before here so it's important to put this content property even if you are going to make it empty but another thing people usually do here you may have seen this on some website is that the before content can have something like open quote the after content can have something like close quote in fact let me remove all of these styles here and now you have this now in this case even if the user translates to english it doesn't matter because this open quote and close quote do not need any translation again i recommend don't use this for text that is important for the user maybe text that they may want to translate they may want to highlight or even for seo purposes but if you want to again add a rectangle a triangle you want to add some visual content to your web page instead of having to add an extra element in your dom you can do that from the before and after pseudo element now one more thing i said i'm going to show you is cases where you cannot use the before and after pseudo element and i'm going to show you the case of an image let's say we have an image and here i'm going to use one of my handsome pictures for images you cannot use the before and after pseudo element and i'm going to explain why let's say we had a content of hello here and then we have image after hi and i refresh we don't see any hello anywhere we don't see any hi anywhere so if you go to the dom now you see that we have this and inside this img we have the before and after but the reason why they are not showing is because just as you know with img element the img tag itself is the image in this h1 you could see that the h1 has a content so the before and after pseudo element can come before and after the content but in the case of img elements img is not something like img that you have your closing img tag then you now have some content here that is not how img elements work the img tag itself is the image so it doesn't really have a content that you can put your before and after so with tags like this that do not exactly have a content you cannot use the before and after pseudo element but with things like h1 div paragraph span sections all of these other tags that have content you can use the before and after pseudo element which like i said would add things before the content of that element and after the content of that element respectively like i said earlier there are a lot of amazing things you can do with the before and after pseudo element but i hope this video has clarified what these pseudo elements are how they are different and how they can be useful from a css perspective if you enjoyed this video please give it a like share with others subscribe for more videos like this i can also check out some mini project that i create with html and css there should be somewhere on the screen you can check it out and learn more things about css